in the 97-98 season, eight of the 10 highest paid players were centers, okay? Mm -hmm. Right now, among the top 20 players in salaries, there is no center to be mentioned. There is not a single one. Have we seen the end of an era? Is it over for the typical center? Will they not be able to make money in today's league? What do you guys think about those numbers? I don't, I don't think that that era is over. It's just that, you know, the league has evolved and usually, you know, we always come back to, to where we started. And I believe that, you know, there, this is just the era of the guard. You know, we had the era of the big man. This is the era of the guard. Now the big man will come back, you know, it'll, it'll be back uh, uh, soon. I don't know when, but you know, we're just in a guard and a perimeter orientated era based on, you know, what we've seen, the players are getting more skilled. Will we ever see the back to the basket dominant player again? I'm not so sure, but the bigs in this league are way more skilled than they were in, in the eighties and the nineties, but they'll come back eventually. I'm telling you, history always repeats itself. I think that's exactly the point though, Paul. I, I think the bigs will come back, but they will be more skilled than ever when they do come back because every you know, a lot, look, you need your skill level now has to be incredible. And Stephen Curry just changed the game from a shooting perspective. And now everybody wants to shoot threes. Now everybody wants to be versatile. Everybody wants to be able to dribble, shoot, pass, you know, do all that stuff. So I, I think you will have bigs that will inevitably, you know, get their cachet back, but they'll just be way more skilled and be able to do way more things because that's you have to survive, adapt, and advance, you know? Yeah. I think uh, it's one of the reasons why on the all-star ballot the nba eliminated the center spot and they started to call it front court is because there are bigs in the league today that are really effective it's just that they're not bulky they're tall Giannis is still seven foot S same same with kd who's basically 6 11. lebron james when you want to talk about like just skill at 6'9", what, 250, he's basically the same size as Carl Malone. Their games are vastly different. <laughs> so b based on that, there are some people that can play in the post. Carl Anthony Towns, Joel Embiid, they can play in the post, but people feel like you're in the way because they want to play pace and space. So those guys have to be facing up all of the time now. And it's going to be hard because it's a copycat league to be a guy that could dominate a small 14 to post you up. Paul, just think about it, how it happened for wings. Twos and threes used to always post up. Yeah. Now these guys don't even, you can put a point guard on these guys. You can put a 5'11 guy on these guys. It don't even matter because all they're doing is shooting threes and spotting up in the corner. Let me ask you this. Would you start a team, if you could right now, you get one player, are you going with elite guard that can shoot the lights out, or are you going with versatile seven-footer? Giannis style. So I guess, are you going Steph, or are you going Giannis? <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys starting That's your team? That's an unfair question, because we, uh, Steph is already proven. He's no, I want to know what you value most. I want to know what you believe should be the building block of your team. I'm always the building block. I'm always going to go with the perimeter player all day. <laughs> uh, you know, somebody who can shoot from the ins from the outside and the inside, uh, who can create for others. Um, I'm going to go that direction all day. You know, if I had to go with just a, like point guard like Steph or Giannis, I, I got to go Steph because he's already proven two-time MVP, three-time champion. Uh, I mean, it's already in his court. Before I answer this question, Jerry Rose, you just, you brought me back to a really weird place when I heard the name Joel Embiid. I was like, oh, <laughs> I just want Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons to find a way to get it together. They should be healthy now. The whole Your thing. finals pick. I know. The championship the squad. They had a chance, Jay Rose. They had a chance. Anyway, uh, sorry about that emotional roller coaster. I, Paul, I, it's hard. I, and I love Steph. Steph, I, I, yeah, I guess I'm going to ride with you, Paul. They know Giannis is versatile and he can do it all. Like there's something about a guy that just has the confidence that could put the ball in the hoop from anywhere on the court. And look, I, I think one of the most underrated things about Steph, because his handle was, it's way more outside that, like that tight, that tight confined box that you dribble. Yo, his handle is extremely, extremely elite. Like his handle is next level. So a guy that can handle like that and shoot, I go with Steph. Maria, mm -hmm. I'm like Paul. 
I want somebody that has perimeter skills. Oh. <laughs> I'm like Jay, that want somebody that has an elite handle and that can shoot the lights out. It's still a tall man's game, fellas. I'm going to take the hybrid of Giannis and Steph and give me Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. That That's who I want. The guy that's taller than everybody that has all of the guard skills. That, that That's really that's what it fair. is. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I like that. Right. So, or, or if not him, second would be probably Anthony Davis. Yeah. Same thing. Guy that's going to protect the rim, block shots, and do all of that defensively. But he out there shooting threes and facing up now. Mm -hmm. So those are actually be my choices. That bodes well for my unborn son. I'm feeling good now. I'm not worried, but I read all those stats and I was like, oh, no, I can't be seven foot anymore and make money. What am I going to do with my life? Maria, when you get over six foot tall, they call it breeding. <laughs> exactly. That's my goal in life. <laughs>